At Planned Parenthood, we believe everybody deserves personalized, compassionate, and expert care. From annual wellness exams to birth control options and STD testing, visit PlannedParenthood.org to schedule an appointment online. Planned Parenthood. Care no matter what. The views and opinions expressed by tonight's guests and topic of discussion do not necessarily represent the official policy or position of S4, its hosts, syndicated carriers, or anyone associated with this broadcast. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this broadcast or podcast without express written consent of S4 is strictly prohibited. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to S4 Radio. Coming to you live from the dark side of midnight. Climb aboard as we explore all aspects of the paranormal. From UFOs and Bigfoot to ghosts and astral travel and all the fringe subjects in between. You have found the cutting edge of Paranormal Talk Radio with your host, Eric Cooper, and our S4 panel of specialists. Prepare to go to the edge. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to S4 with Eric Cooper, broadcasting live from the beautiful mountains of concrete, Washington. Tonight, by popular demand, uh, we are having our team show. We were actually going to have a different show this evening, but we had a lot of people requesting a team show because we've uh, missed it a couple times due to scheduling conflicts. So, here it is. Tonight on our panel, we have our Keith Andrews, astrologer and alien specialist, Donna Cunningham of the Astral Team, Bonnie Smith of the Astral Team, uh, myself, Corey Reist, and your host, Forest Moon Paranormal's own, Mr. Eric Cooper. Oh, wow. Good uh, good evening, uh, s 4 um, Yeah, it's been a rough month. I'm telling you what, and that's why it's a perfect time to have a team show tonight, because, uh, it's needed. Yeah. And why is it needed? Well, we're going to go into that tonight because uh, it's it's very much needed. This is going to be the team show that you've never heard before. <laughs> I can guarantee it. Um, <laughs> I want to explain what an emergency response team in general does. I want to explain how a paranormal emergency response team can really be an asset to non-paranormal emergencies. Um, and we're not going to get into any kind of specifics because uh, we've been dealing with a case for roughly a month now that doesn't need to be really disclosed other than that there is a missing person and that's all you need to know. Um, she's been missing 25 days. 25 days and it's been draining very draining and really frustrating when you have mediums you have astral teams that are telling you where this individual is and not a damn person wants to listen do you know how frustrating that gets you oh, yeah. <laughs> you know how many times I've been wanting to throw him the damn towel and say, screw it. Why do we even do this? Yeah, a few times on this one. Oh, yeah. Well, um, I know I've, <laughs> I, I've seen it happen so often where the non-paranormal people 
basically seem to look at the paranormal specialists as completely out to lunch, even though on occasion they end up with a better track record than the standards. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get to that, Keith. We're actually gonna get to that. Um, yeah, I had to regain composure here for a second because uh, yeah, it gets really frustrating, and I, I can't even put to, into words my feelings. I really can't. I can't hike in those areas because I'm well. I'm gonna be 50 in February, and my 19 and a half years army takes its toll. Uh, so. Uh, Physically, yeah, I can go hiking all over the place, but that particular area, no. So, uh, we started, you know, so Forest Moon, and for any new listeners that are listening tonight, uh, Forest Moon's actually been up and running roughly since 2006 and started in Iraq. And, uh, we started the astral side of it in 2012. And we've been going balls to the wall since 2012. To the point that we actually started a missing persons division. And I want to say 2014. Does that sound about right, Donna, Bonnie? 16. Um, I think that was 16 that we started that. Yeah. Was it? Briefly, like around this time of year, actually. It was about right. six. It lasted about six months because, again, when you don't have validation, when you don't have boots on the ground to go verify a location, what the hell you do it for? You can have, you know, 11 billion people saying the same thing. They're in the woods behind a waterfall over here. Hello. Is that Dreda? Hi. All right. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Hello, how are you? All right. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> so, when you have 11 billion people that are saying the same thing, but you can't get canines in, you can't get uh, boots on ground in because nobody listens, uh, why do you do it? That's really the bottom line. And, you know, we've actually, as a team, had three different cases where we actually did peeing on the location and the person was indeed found there after the fact had the team been uh, you know had the team actually been listened to about the time that i was identifying the location that was being hit on they might have been alive except with the exception of one case where it was a motor vehicle accident but mm -hmm. the location was right on to where our medium said he would be so, I guess the best way to approach it until law enforcement and other first response agencies recognize the fact that there are actually teams out there that are quite accurate at what they do, we just do our own thing. Ultimately, that is what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, I know working because working with law enforcement and I mean, let's face it, law enforcement does a good job, but I remember doing a where we were looking for a missing kid and the the FBI literally shut us down. And we had the kid tagged down. We knew exactly where she was. Only the FBI literally stepped in and said, no, stop talking to these people. They did eventually find the munchkin, but too bad it was, uh, as the saying goes, too late. Yeah, right. 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 And, you know, what does it mean to... First of all, let's back up. What's, a, what's an emergency? What's a paranormal emergency? It also a paranormal emergency by the force moon paranormal definition is anything... Generally speaking, the first tier, because we have it on levels of basically triage, um, anything involving a severe crisis, which would be uh, a spirit scratch somebody, uh, a spirit push somebody down the, down the stairs, or anything involving children or pregnant women. 
we haven't we haven't actually done this conversation in a while, so it's about time. Um, right. So why pregnant women? And you know, if you're local, we want you on the team. Uh, I'm pushing that out right now because I'm doing a heavy uh, new member push because of the new uh, new new projects we're working on. And uh, so you're going to get all this in training. Uh, our training session, uh, training cycle actually begins in October once Paracon's over with and uh, I get back from Caribou, Paracon. And we can actually start breathing again. So uh, I'll be putting together a bit of a, <laughs> I guess, a more intense training program will be an understatement. <laughs> um because we're actually going into, you know, we're actually going to have a team paramedic. We're going to actually have rope, you know, technical rope rescue uh, individuals. We're actually going to, well, I'm jumping the gun. I'll get to that. Um, <laughs> the, the things that go through my head, though, um, I'll, I'll tell you what. Um, but why why would we worry about pregnant women? You want You want to handle that, Bonnie? Oh, because pregnant women are vulnerable and so are their fetuses and a lot of entities and things will take the fetus or cause a, a spontaneous abortion, it will seem like, to the person. And uh, the fetus will not be there anymore. They'll take their soul. There are things that will take their soul and things that will take them for use. So it's real important to protect them and the unborn child as soon as possible if there's any paranormal activity going on. How's that? <laughs> That's excellent. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Um, also, uh, high stress is bad. Simply high stress is bad for the uh, pregnant woman and the fetus together. So even if, if the entity isn't specifically trying to attack the fetus, uh, you know, something that's causing high stress is not going to be good for them either. No, even yeah, if the spirit is a, is a friendly one. It can cause complications. Wow. Perfect. Well, yeah, because anything that is that is uh, unusual and stressful <laughs> to the mother can be unusual and stressful to the child. And stress is is um, you know, it's a high key thing to uh, cause women to miscarry or cause complications with deliveries or anything else. Anytime there's a trauma going on, you open up that door to anything paranormal. Give me, uh, gonna cut in here for just a second, Cooper. I believe Tony looks like he may be able to come in now. If you want me to go ahead and try to bring him in, yeah, let's get Tony in. Okay, give, give me one moment. Tony's one we don't get in here too often. <laughs> so, you you guys hit it right on the head. Uh, I like to hear that because I know our training's uh, working excellent. You can, you guys can actually take over training one day. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so let's talk about tier two. What, what's on tier two? Okay. Oh, come on now. Alien abduction. Okay. Well, my my problem was not knowing which one was which tier. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, but I got Bonnie and Donna right here. They 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 know what the tiers are. Well, that you know, would we be. We have alien abductions that are going on, and you know, <laughs> alien abductions usually follow a family line. So usually, if there's one <laughs> person being abducted, then it's usually within a family that's being abducted. And it could be from grandparents to to you know grandchildren and. Uh, has a tendency to follow that line, but it really is very disruptive in many manners when, you know, they are doing experiments on people and it has a tendency to, um, you know, freak people out in all kinds of different levels, you know, causes post-traumatic and and everything else. And we've got to where we can shut down a lot of those now. Okay, I believe we have Tony in with us now. Oh, good. Good. Uh, you know, Tony's one of you no know, Tony's our astral team leader and and trainer, and uh, we don't get him in the show too often because he's usually working right about now. So, uh, how you doing, Tony? 
He's not doing too bad. Good. He's going to be here in about 28, 29 days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I know he's counting. I, I know Tony's counting down the hours. Um, so, tier three, uh, actually, yeah, tier three uh, is going to go into the UFO sightings, uh, the Bigfoot sightings, the things that aren't so much of a crisis, but the things we do investigate. Yeah, or attacks entities that attack and are harming people. And that's the tier one. That would be the ones that are causing right. the most crisis. Right. Um, why would kids be on tier one? Anyone? Because they're sensitive. No. They're sensitive. They're easier to get to because they haven't developed the the even the cognitive self-defense mechanisms. And oddly enough, their level of curiosity makes them extremely vulnerable. Because they don't crash. Exactly. Exactly. Not to mention, being vulnerable, they're more sensitive to being attacked. Mm, yep. So, that, that that's the baseline for how we operate as far as the uh, paranormal emergencies go. And... Those are paranormal emergencies. But there's a lot of other emergencies that skills on our team can handle that are obviously non-paranormal. So what the team is going to be working on is disaster response, um, terrorist response, you know, things of that nature, along with missing people. And, you know, as I said before, we've tried this before. We're going to actually do more local cases with boots on ground. That would be the goal. So you want to? Th you got anything you want to add, Tony? Uh, <laughs> I know. Uh, I know Richard's doing a class nice thing thing. for the next nice group. answer. <laughs> 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 I said, I know uh, we're about to start our next class for our next group uh, to, you know, get more astral because, I don't know, I've, I've seen a lot of people come and go, and I think right now we got a pretty solid group, and that's, we've stuck together for probably, I don't know, Bonnie and Donna, they've been with us for about two years, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Two, maybe even three. Um, we're like working on, yeah, if you count helping us two and then training us, then we've been on the team two years. It's yeah. Not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a new It has been training on steroids, too. <laughs> now, we have our astral team. I think what I wanted to add to that is a medium team. Mediums don't have to astral. We just have to have a medium that does astral. And that's a that's a that's a bonus, but I think it would be um, beneficial to get a team of mediums that we actually vet, you know, verify that they're, they're skilled at what they do, and because they work on a different level, on a different scale, basically, than what Ashwell does. Well, yeah, so they, they could. Could, you know, you could have a medium that could pick up on location. You could have, send out the astral to, to astral identify it, and then just send boots on ground to go ver validate all of it. Mm -hmm. See, the funny uh, thing... Hey. Go ahead. The, the funny trick with, with finding mediums is what most people don't realize with mediums is it's like walking into a crowded room Asking to talk to Bob. <laughs> you know, you need something. The medium really does need, need an actual name or something solid to work with. Because when we walk into the room, you're asking to talk to somebody. And, you know, I, I love the people that come to me going, I just want to know if anybody from the other side has a message for me. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. Rick <laughs> and, and Charlie. I'll tell you. <laughs> Rick and Charlie and Susan all said hi. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's not usually the comment that I get them telling me. Only <laughs> I'm not about to repeat that on the air. No. <laughs> <laughs> so... What we need to stress to non-believers is the fact that you can indeed pinpoint a location that you're looking for something or somebody, send in boots on ground to validate it, and ideally bring whoever home. Yeah. That would be the best outcome. The thing well, that I mean, that's the same know. outcome that that even a non-paranormal team is going to have is to investigate by any means that they can, see if they can right. locate and and bring them home. We're no different than any other kind of emergency response team. We just have different tools to use. That's all. The, the only difference there is. Well, exactly, and they, the thing is, what people have to remember, because the thing I keep hearing people going and asking for is, well, prove it works. Well, your crew can actually do that, but the thing that people have to realize is lack of proof is not proof of lack. In other words, right. just because you can't prove something exists doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Right. Right. And that, that's the other thing. We're not out there to find proof. We're out there to get the job done. <laughs> we we don't need to find proof that, you know, a place is haunted like some of these other groups do. Our job is to, you know, fix the issue, not make the spirits angry or whatever entity is there. That's the something else that's different about us. Well, yeah, that's the, that's the big thing. I mean, why go in and push, a, you know, and push buttons? You know, when, you know, I know talking to a lot of people that have had missing children or missing pets or missing loved ones, you know, they really, when when push comes to shove, they could care less how somebody is found and brought home. They're much more concerned with whether they're brought home. Right. So I, I want to expand on this real quick. Because we've got Tony. And so when I give you a photo or a grid and I ask you to look for energy, how do you identify that energy on a grid? Usually I work off auras. Uh, Once I find someone's aura, I try to track it down. That's the best way I can... Describe mine. Okay. And because I, I want the non believer that may be listening to the show tonight to understand what it is exactly we do and how skills on a team like this, because we're not the only team, we're just one of the many that uses this ability. So. Basically, the way it works, I get a case. I'll send it to whoever basically is available on the team. And I'll generally be able to give them an address if it's a normal case. If it's a normal, easy case, you know, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'd much rather have our team work on a spirit, a malevolent entity, or an alien abduction than I would a missing person. That's just hands down. Any day. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is why we got out of it. And, uh, you know, for the last 25 days has been hell because, well, we have a local case that we've been working, and that's the only reason we got pulled into it. Um, so, basically, I get a picture of a mountain. I get a picture of a state, a city. Because, I mean, we've actually had cases where, in, in fact, it was Tony where we had a missing son. And it was actually you and Keith both that I sent on this case. And you both described the exact same park 
on the other end of town. And when I told the mother that her son, who is homeless, will be found in a park on the other end of the name of that town, she called, because this, I mean, this is in a whole other state. I can't remember what state it was. Well, I do, but I'm not going to say it. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> right. But when this guy's friends went to that park, they actually found him in the exact same description of the location that we told them we they would, he'd be found. Um, that's just Keith and Tony. We've got the entire team on this case that we're working right now. Amongst the other, I don't know, 10 or so cases we're working. And, uh, At least. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're going to, well, second hour, we're actually going to talk about the future. <clears throat> um, first hour, I, I really want to hit home what the team does how the team works and why it works. You know, here's a, some interesting thought on the, on the, on the whole situation here is that, you know, we, we have some different tools that we use. That's for sure. No doubt. Uh, but you know, for the, when it comes right down to, to it, other than, you know, the, the paranormal part of it, which is obviously a bit different. But the other stuff that we do for, for disaster response and for whatever else type stuff that, that's going on or for search and rescue stuff, you know, we do, we're, we're basically doing the same thing that other entities do, um, you know, in, the, in a lot of the same manners we do them. You know, minus the fact that we do have a few extra tools that we can use uh, in our toolbox to help us, you know, find people or, you know, whatever it may be. You know, the only the only reason, really the only reason for the most part, because most people don't even realize that we have some of these other tools that we're using, you know, is just simply because they, they say, oh, it says paranormal on our name. So, you know, you can't be anything. Why not? Mm-hmm. Why not? <laughs> you know, we're people just like the rest of you. We just have a different name on the end of our group. You know, it's time for people to open up their brains a little bit and realize that it's not in a name what somebody can or can't do. It's in what they can or can't do, you know, uh, and stop, you know, discriminating against somebody else just because of a name because we right, can, well, we can it, do this just as well as anyone bit, else it goes a little bit beyond that because just even having the name the fact that we believe in aliens and we deal with spirits actually came up with with a, a couple conversations that oh my god you guys believe in aliens and spirits so you can't do anything um, and that's really <laughs> What it boils down to. We believe in aliens and spirits, so we shouldn't be smart any other way. (laughs) Well, see, that's just it. I keep telling people, you know, when they tell me, oh, you can't, you know, we we don't believe in in aliens and spirits. I look at them and go, well, that's okay, because they believe in you. (laughs) Good answer. Good one. Yeah. Well, I love the that people tell me, you know, that tell me they don't they don't believe in anything they can't see. And <laughs> I made a mistake taking that the religious truth, so I've changed that a little and asked if anybody actually has ever seen gravity. <laughs> because I'll tell you, you, know, out, you, know, it, you know, it it does play havoc with your life. Some else I found funny, and I found it proven to be true. There's a lot of non-believers <laughs> until they need help. Oh, and then yeah. all of a sudden, you know, they start believing, yeah. oh, you guys are actually doing this stuff. You know, sometimes it actually takes them to be the victim enough to help them for them to go, oh, you guys well, are, I, you know, I remember, pulling I remember talking to a, I remember talking to a veteran one day, and they told me there are, there are no non-believers 
on the battlefield. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. And, you know, and, and the, the ones that, because uh, I, you know, we're at the market every weekend. And I get the ones that come up and they, they, they see paranormal on our banner. And so you believe in this stuff? I'm like, uh, yeah, that's what we do. We're an emergency response team, yada, yada, yada. Going to the spiel. <laughs> and, and I ask them, you know, so you haven't, you haven't seen Bigfoot? No. You haven't seen UFOs? No. And I will, <laughs> you're lucky. You're lucky because I'm telling you right now, um, the ones that we have to deal with, if you have that mindset, you wouldn't know what to do. Well, that's just it. I mean, I take a look at it. It's like you don't believe in them. And, like, I know a lot of people that fit that fit that bill. And the problem they run into is exactly that. If you don't believe these things are possible and all of a sudden you get faced head on with it, you are so mm-hmm. far out of the water, you don't have a clue what you're up to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've seen that happen to a few people, too, and it does turn them around if they have a good enough experience, you know, like, wow, and then see that, okay, wow. <laughs> yeah. What was that? Just leave it at wow. Tell <laughs> <laughs> you know, me what you call it. Okay, okay, wow, and oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Question for That's good, though, uh, because it's one more believer when that happens. Question for Bonnie and Donna. How many times have we been interviewing a person? And their response is, I know you probably think I'm crazy. But everyone else that's has thought I was crazy for this. the first out of their that's mouth. Almost, almost every mouth. Yeah, always. Mouth. I know, I've never told anyone, or if I have, I'm, people think I'm crazy. Yep, first yep. word. Yep. That is a very normal response. Well, that's almost, always 100%, almost 100%. 99% of all cases, I know you probably think I'm crazy. No. We've seen this stuff. We've dealt with this stuff. Yeah. We understand. Mm-hmm. You're telling the truth. Right. Yeah. And we do get our crazy ones every now and then. But yeah. we have a lot more people that actually need help. I would yeah, say. Yeah, but we don't just discard them as crazy really quickly. We go through everything and make sure that, you know, we go through a process. We just don't just wave them off all your crazy boo. We go through yeah. and check them oh, and go through the whole thing and then try to help them. And honestly, the, psychi- the the psychiatric issues that come out are blatantly obvious when they come oh, out. Yeah. Right. Um, and for the any new listeners, we do have a therapist that handles the psychiatric issues. She gets them the help they need. Um, but again, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So in those yeah. cases, we do get haters because of the fact that, well, once we ruled them as psychiatric, you, you can't you can't do anything more for them. Well, I, I will tell you, you can actually lead a horse to water and force it to drink, but it takes a lot of work. It, it does. It's called driving the horse. <laughs> it does. <laughs> You know, the, the trick in, well, the, in the getting a horse to drink is, hey, is the timing of it. But the, the sad part is finding a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a therapist of any form that isn't going to lock you up in a heartbeat when you say, oh, by the way, I think I've been abducted, is a challenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, the, the thing with, with that, though, and you, you'll, you, you'll probably agree with me, Keith, but... Uh, Abduction cases follow a very, very similar pattern. So, with with that being said, uh, oftentimes the abductee doesn't even know they've been taken until they start telling you, you know, what their paranormal issue is, and then all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> oh, damn, you follow the uh, pattern of an abductee. Oh, and you yeah. Start asking right. them, and then you, you start asking them, you know, further questions, and... I hate being the first one to tell someone they've been abducted. Uh, I've done it before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it turns the whole world upside down. Uh, Yeah. but A lot of times they think they're having a repetitive dream. 
you know, well, when they're, they're being they're... abducted. They just think they're having a repetitive dream, and and they try to write it off. That's that, that, you know, rational side of your brain, uh, things of the unknown that you don't know. Everybody tries to write that off in their, in their conscience so that they... So it doesn't freak them out. So that's that's what I find a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's abject rationality. And I'm going to say it. <laughs> you know, not every missing person's case is an alien abduction. No, no, no. Fairness, no. very few are. Comparatively, no, very, very, very few. Oh, in fact, I'm the same though. Not every spirit case is demonic. That's well, something how we get pushed into everyone's head. Sometimes it's really hard to convince a client that thinks because a lot of them think they have a demon. Very, I mean, an uh, enormous amount that it isn't one, that it's something else, but that's still scary to them, you know. Oh, yeah. Getting that through their head's not easy. <laughs> they want to completely keep calling to the demon, and you're trying to, you know, no. <laughs> but you know, very angry spirit. Like but it, 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 it this listen. I see that stuff on Hollywood. Yeah, no. Well, and mm-hmm. you, you've got uh, you've got a lot of the organized religion to blame for the the whole demon aspect of everything. Are there some out there? Sure. You'll run into them occasionally, but, you know, most of it's not. And, in, and the reason that everyone thinks it is is usually because of organized religion. You know, they convince them that everything, everything that isn't of whatever it may be is, is definitely a demon. So, you know, <laughs> they, they fart wrong and they think it's a demon. And, you know, it's, it's pretty bad. It, and, and it's funny because, you know, what's well, not funny, but it is funny. I just had this conversation on the Cena Georgia show, uh, what, two weeks ago? Might have even been last week. And we we're, you know, she, she was asking uh, my perception of, of demons. And I, I told her, honestly, uh, you know, we've been doing this at five cases a day for the last six years with the astral. And you do the math. How many of those are demons? Maybe 10? Maybe. And you know, in fairness, the thing people keep forgetting is demons are a race unto themselves. And everything that looks like a demon isn't a demon. Right. Yeah, true. Well, they have their own hierarchy and their own stuff to worry about. Way more than whether a mortal is doing something. They could get... Like, in the words of Eric, the fart in the wind, less about what mortals are doing. They got to worry about their own stuff, usually. Well, well I was actually going to, yeah, I was going to bring this up to you, uh, Tony, because you know more about demons than uh, I think anybody on the team. Um, but the fact of the matter is, not all demons are bad. Um, nope. Some well, demons you can actually work with. They and, Most of them will have some type of self-esteem. They will not work must have something to gain from it, but look at most humans, how is that any different? Sadly. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, I said that on another show, that, you know, there's actually pagans that work with demons. And, oh my God, he could have sucked the air out of the room. <gasps> Seriously? And that does not make who us would, satanic or anything. Who would want to work with a demon? Well, actually, demons are no different than other entities. With the, exception, the <laughs> with the exception well, well, that there wait, are why would uh, humans work with aliens? You know, you're you're telling right. me there's good aliens, just like there's you know, some decent demons. Yeah, there's all sorts of different ones out there. There's good humans out there. Right. There's bad humans out there. There's oh, not yeah. much different. Exactly. I'm aliens, some humans that might say I'll be the demons these days. <laughs> to be honest. Well, I I think the misconception comes. From the Bible. Because if you look at the Bible, if you look at the Quran, all demons are evil. Right. Those are the two religious texts that talk about demons the most. The Quran and the Bible. And 
<laughs> you know, if you if you follow the dogma of any one religion, then you're you're going to have a biased view. If that is the dogma you're setting. Yeah, and you know the 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 funny part about that, I've been I've actually been researching the various different religions, and it turns out <laughs> that all of them. Well, minus one, when you look at the backbone of the religions, which is really realistically the commandments, the backbone are identical. Right. Okay. Like literally Christianity, Judaism, Sikh, the Hindu, the um, the Wiccan, the Church of Satan, they all have literally the same commandments. Now, if this is the case, and considering we also know that when, when, when you start looking into, into the religious aspect, it does tell you that, you know, everybody says, oh, God made man in his, Im- in his own image. But God also says he has many, many children on many worlds. Right. And what I found with the different religions of the other worlds is they also teach the same Ten Commandments. In all fairness, they only teach four, but the four commandments encompass all of the others. Hmm. Yeah. So and something I mean, to hit on there also is if you look at a bunch of different religions, the Greeks, they talk about a great flood. The Bible talks about the great flood. All these different cultures from all around the world talk about great flood. A great flood happened. I don't doubt that. But was it Noah writing out, writing it out on the ark with just his family? That part I'm going to disagree with. Well, that one I can but tell it's you. It's happened from many different times. Uh, you know, that's the thing. All over the world, world different cultures have talked about a great flood. The, the funny thing about the flood is it wasn't only one boat, although Noah's was the biggest. Yes. yes. Yeah, we have to say that it happened in more than one, right? Well, let's face it, they found, I mean, it's a little hard to argue that the flood didn't exist when they've got a boat stuck in the middle in the top of Mount Ararat that measures correctly. Yeah, in Turkey, wasn't it, or somewhere? Is that in Turkey? Or near uh, there they near, found yeah. something? That was... Somewhere up in there. I did hear about that, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it, yeah. It, it, they couldn't extricate it because it's part of the mountain. <clears throat> <laughs> and, and I can't repeat what Markham just said, but yeah. <laughs> no, you really um, can't. <laughs> <clears throat> Politely put, that would be do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. <laughs> uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> Although that is you know, Markham's method in the chat room is the colloquial way of phrasing it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Although. Uh, we won't go down that road. Then you start looking at, at uh, George Carlin and listening to his rendition. Mount Ararat is in Turkey. Thank you. And therefore, so is the Ark. <laughs> I will tell you, it was a silly place to put But no, they, the, the difficult part of the whole thing especially when you start looking at emergency response, is does it really matter to the people that you're reaching out to help? Does it matter to them, on the whole, how you go about getting them help? Now, there are the, there are a few that I've run into that, you know, people, people like your crew there, they, you know, they, would, they will turn the help down because it's evil. The help is evil. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just kind of shake my head at that, going, "What do I deal with?" <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Mark comes going in the chat room. He goes, "I like my method better." He says, "I like mine better." <laughs> well, we can we still can't repeat it. Well, oh, sure, I figured out how to do it. Commandment one: Thou shalt not be a big old jerk to other people. That would take care of the other yeah. nine. Edited that, version. That, yeah. That's the politically correct means of saying his method. 
Yeah. <laughs> His version we just can't see on the air. Yeah, that's not a... Yeah, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Definitely not. <laughs> so... Like I said, second hour, we're actually going to go and uh, we're, it looks like we're going to be able to pull Markham into a uh, second hour as well. That'd be great. Um, I like his input on our future plans, which will start in October. And again, I want to put out there that we are doing a heavy recruitment drive uh, for new members. Um, it really doesn't matter if you're disabled. It really doesn't matter because uh, everybody's got a capacity. Um yeah, and in all fairness, I've never met somebody that was actually disabled. <laughs> well, okay. So there's areas that I can't hike, for example. I'm not physically I disabled. Mean, yeah. uh, but, you know, there's always something somebody can do, whether it's making coffee in the base camp, whether it's cooking everybody breakfast in the base camp, whether it's running radios while everyone else is out. Uh, there, There is you know, and we're going to go into the breakdown here in the second hour because uh, I already know how operations need to run. I've done this before. Uh, I've been in search and rescue. I've been on fire department. Uh, you know, 19 and a half years in the Army is nothing but emergency management. And, uh, well, Markham's not here. Tony, like Tony, you'd agree. Tony also, for those yep. that don't know, because we don't get Tony on the show too often, but he is also a combat vet. Yeah, and you see the the sad part there. Like I never I never did combat. I grew up on an air base during the Vietnam War. Right. And granted, being epileptic, they wouldn't give me an automatic weapon. But on the <laughs> other hand, being a seer, the nightmares I got, I will tell you the nightmares that vets have are no fun to walk around in. No. Oh, uh, hmm. Yeah, you know, and you know, pe like people, I, I've had people tell me, "Oh, I suffer from PTSD," and I'm looking at them, going, "Okay, when that event happened, do you react completely as though you're in that event?" Well, no, I, you know, it it bothers me, so it's PTSD. No, it isn't. You know, I remember watching a watching a vet. We were walking through a grocery store, and somebody dropped a bottle of pickles. And it shattered. Well, I'll tell you, you watch that happen, and it is nothing like anxiety. Hmm. Yeah, you know, and I know you guys know what that's like. Well, well, it's, I'm, well I've seen the same thing with fireworks. Someone will drop a firework right next to the veteran. You can tell some of the veterans because they're the ones that's pulling someone else to the ground with them. They yeah. think they're getting incoming mortar fire or something or a grenade. And yeah. Sometimes, you know, if there's no one around, they will hit the ground, and you'll see it. But there's someone around, usually, you can tell it's a, you know, combat vet, because they don't care who's next to them. They're trying to pull them down to save their life. Yep. They could just be a little firecracker. Well, you, that, you, that you know, triggers you, it. You, you take Keith's uh, same analogy of dropping a jar of pickles. If you was to take that same jar of pickles and drop it in the middle of a commissary, you would know exactly yeah. who was a combat vet. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, you'd also know who is having trouble with the food supply because they're the ones diving on top of it, looking for the pickles, not for the not for cover. Exactly. They can have all the pickles they want. They can have my share. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will. I'll show them one of the thousand ways to eat spam. <laughs> yeah. With see, the no more heat. We, yeah. we found out the hard way that my PTSD is triggered by the hospital, which means I can't even go into a hospital, even if I am in oh. trouble. Oh, great. Oh, yeah, it works uh, great. I've got a heart that keeps stopping on me, and I can't go to the hospital for it. And that's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. <laughs> <laughs> it can be difficult. But no, the, the sad uh -huh. part is, what people don't realize with emergency response, the thing with the astral team is they can get to you in a heartbeat. Well, usually what, Bonnie? It takes you about a minute to get to the other side of the planet? 
Yeah, if that long. <laughs> if that long, yeah. It's like I saw it. <laughs> You know, it, used to, it, it used to be kind of like I'd be flying around and <laughs> now just zoom. It's like zoom. It's more of an instantaneous, like I, I missed the trip kind of, you know. But, oh, it is. Yeah. But, it must be you amazing. Know, what, what people don't realize is people can get there faster with these tools. But, of course, we end up with the other problem of well, if you can get there, you know, and I've been asked, well, if you can, if you can astral travel, are you spying on everybody? And I'm like, you know, uh, not really. You can yeah. consider privacy, oh stay out of my journal. I consider privacy. Would you mind staying out of my head? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. what, yeah. what, 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 kills that. what kills me is that like we have time for that. Yeah, that's no. what I mean. <laughs> Do you really think we have time to go spying on everybody? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Well, <laughs> we have better crap to do. Not any inclination or bother. <laughs> well, I actually, I had a client one day that, that told me he thought he was being spied on by the government. And I, the long story short, I told him, I said, look, I got good news and bad news. The good news is you're right. There is no question the government is watching what you're up to and they've got all sorts of things tagged. So he starts going off, and I says, the bad news is, frankly, you aren't that important. (laughs) (laughs) No. No, I can assure you. I can assure you. They got more important people to fry than them. Yeah. But when it comes to finding, and I wish that the the non-paranormal researching crews would actually turn around and and turn to the paranormal because there are times when non-paranormals can't find what they're looking for. Lord yeah. knows, even being paranormal, I have a problem with it. I keep losing my coffee cup. What could it hurt anyway? They have, you know, what could it hurt if they haven't found the person anyway? Well, if everybody tried to work together once. <laughs> I mean, I know in some places it's more accessible. And I've seen television shows years, not recently, but years ago, some psychics leading on, you know, helping with murder investigations and things. But, you know, if I find anything like that, I'm really afraid to come forward to, to be honest, you know. <laughs> oh, I, I've told you. I mean, people. not with the case we're working, but I'm talking about in the real world because it's, how are you going to tell them I know that, you know? Well, that's why when I was asked to look into a case locally here, I told the woman, I says, yeah, I'll talk to the police, but let's be clear. I will not go into the police on into the police station and volunteer. They want to find me. I'm not hard to find. Uh-huh. You know, because it's just that. You go in, you tell the authorities, and the first thing they're asking you is how you know this information. You're already right. at the bottom of the list. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it's a very bad situation to be in. I have a situation I've been in known about for 23 years. It, it's no physical evidence, but I know it's psychic, and I'm not about to open my mouth. And that's terrible. Things yeah, should change. For Eric and them, they're over in Washington where it's kind of more accepted. I'm in Indiana. We are like the <laughs> yeah. Christian Bible Belt area. I don't talk about the stuff with half the people here. Well, that was yeah. that was like growing up in Comox in in British Columbia, Canada, right smack in the middle uh-huh. of a small town Bible Belt. That was yeah. a lot. Oh, you know I how think it is, the, You know the the other bad side that we have to, that we get to deal with is when you have people like Sylvia Brown, who told oh, the family, yeah. you know, the whole Sylvia <laughs> Brown story, where the, the most, one of the most famous psychics of that time. Is going to tell a family that you can stop looking for your child because, well, your child's dead. And they come oh, to find mm-hmm. out that child had been alive, quite alive, and tortured in a basement for years. But the family uh, stopped looking for him, you know. Yeah. So yeah. when you have famous people like that, they give the whole field a bad yeah. name. Which is what makes it hard for teams like ours to get listened to. Are we all, are we always a hundred percent? No, we're not. But anyone who says they are, they're the ones you walk away from. Oh yeah, 
for sure. <laughs> I, can, I can guarantee, though, we're no more way, accurate man. than the other man. <laughs> we are. Well, that's I just it. You take a look at that. And the n- number of people, like the ones I have trouble with are the ones that go, oh, you're possessed, and give me another $500, and I can cure that <laughs> possession for you. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, well, yeah, yeah the, the, I've had the people minute, offer the, to pay me so many times, I don't even know. The, the minute people are posting our group, and Eric has called them down on people like this. Right at PM, our our people posting for helping our group, other people trying to home in on them and get involved in it. And every now and then, you just recently had a post about that. They were actually contacting some of our clients, other people, and telling them to do stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> Eric, that's <guess> what. <laughs> You just can't mix it up that way. Mm-hmm. Well, we're at the top of the uh, five minutes from the top of the hour. Now, let's go ahead and go to break, Corey. And when we come back, uh, hopefully, we'll have Mark come in and we are going to talk about how we're going to fix this problem. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, when we come back from break, uh, we're going to continue our team discussion tonight. And on our panel, we have R. Keith Andrews, astrologer and alien specialist, uh, Donna Cunningham from the Astral Team, Bonnie Smith of the Astral Team, and Tony LaCroix of the Astral Team. Uh, hopefully, when we get back, we're going to have Eric Markham, our FMP scientist. Uh, we also are lucky enough to have Joretta Osborne on tonight. And she is from our aftercare team. <clears throat> Uh, join us every Saturday night at midnight Pacific Standard Time. You can find us on Spreaker.com, The Fringe FM. And for local listeners, you can catch our shows on KSVU 90.1 on your FM dial. Uh, Saturdays at 10 p.m. to midnight. Please go to TheFringe.fm and check out the show lineup with shows like Lighting the Void with Joe Roop and The Paranormal Code with Rich Giordano and a plethora of other good shows. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back. This is Joe Roop from Lighting the Void and you're listening to KTLK Digital Broadcasting Station, The Fringe FM. Hi folks. CBD is the home run hitter for health right now. Why, you ask? Because of what it does for the body. Unfortunately, I can't tell you all about the benefits. You know, there's reasons. Do your due diligence and log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Ancient Life Oil uses organic ingredients and is blended in coconut oil for some of the best benefits. Legal in 50 states and non-psychoactive. Log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Select Joe Roop at checkout at ancientlifeoil.com. This is Mary Ellen Coppock of the Sanctuary for Mind, Body, and Spirit. Listen on the Fringe FM every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern, where we talk all things mind, body, and spirit. You'll learn things from the esoteric to modern-day health, as well as hear from incredible special guests. There will be something for everyone each week, so don't miss it. That's every Monday night, 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern, live right here on the Fringe FM. See you there. Reclaim your active lifestyle with Angioprim. Angioprim is the original liquid oral chelation supplement. Chelation helps remove toxins, heavy metals, and cholesterol in your veins and arteries that can cause blockages. Scientific research proves the active ingredient in Angioprim has superior oral chelation action that helps promote cardiovascular health. Find out more. Go to angioprim.com. Talk to a trained consultant by calling Angioprim toll-free, 877-882-7221. This is author Gordon Roop of GordonRoop.com, and you're listening to KTLK, The Fringe FM. How you doing today, guys? This is Garrett Lee. And this is Randy Warner from the Healers and Hellraisers podcast, a podcast about people. You're going to hear stories from the enlightening to the frightening, told by those who lived it. Listen right here on The Fringe FM. Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, and on The Fringe Free For All, right here on The Fringe FM. Hey folks, guess what the number one phrase that Life Change Tea receives by email? You ready? We love this tea. We love this tea. Time after time, week after week, we love this tea. Life Change Tea gives you more energy. 
a beautiful cleansing, and fulfills its slogan perfectly, the tea that makes you go. So if you want to be on your health game, log on to GetTheTea.com and order Life Change Super Strength Tea. Packages come in a one-month supply, and when you brew this stuff, wait until you see the results. Aren't we all about the results? And with a lot of people's health struggling, we can use a little bit of help. Doctors will tell you, disease starts in the gut. So, log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Be our next email saying, I love this tea. I mean, I love this tea. Get the tea at GetTheTea.com. Helping America, one tea bag at a time. This is Reverend John M. Polk from johnpolkmedia.com, and you are listening to KTLK, The Fringe FM. Paranormal Radio hasn't changed much in the last 20 years. It's the same boring, safe, and easy radio. The guest comes on, the host asks questions, the guest answers, and the show, right? Not with the Paranormal Code. You actually get entertainment. You actually get information told to you the way it should be told. Very truthful, very direct. I'm your host, Rich Giordano of the Paranormal Code. You can listen to me Monday through Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific on the Fringe FM. I hope to see you there. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Hi, this is Ryan Gable, host of the Secret Teachings Radio Show. If you are interested in ancient knowledge and hidden mysteries, as well as a unique and balanced perspective on conspiracies, symbols, and the occult, then join me every Saturday, Sunday, and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 4 p.m. Eastern, right here on The Fringe FM. Hey, this is Kurt Green from the Kurt Green Hour. You're listening to KTOK, The Fringe FM. Welcome back to S4 Radio. Welcome back, everyone. For those of you who just joined us tonight, we are having our monthly team show on our panel tonight. We have R. Keith Andrews, Donna Cunningham, Bonnie Smith, Eric Markham, uh, Jaretta Osborne, and thankfully, Tony was able. Tony Lacroix was able to be with us uh, for the first hour of this evening, but he does have to get up and go to work in the morning, so he had to bow out for second hour. But we like to thank him very much for being on this evening. Everyone else, welcome back and thank you. Hey, Thanks glad to be back you. for a change. Hey, we've been missing the Markham voice in here. <laughs> so, well, you know, first hour we hit on what the problem is. And that is basically when you have a, a, a fairly advanced team that can identify locations without physically being there, you don't get listened to. Um, <clears throat> the second hour, I want to go into how we're going to fix it. And, yes, we do have a plan. And I'll say it a third time. We are doing a heavy FMP recruiting drive. Um, what we're looking for, even if you're not into the, you know, I have people that aren't even into the paranormal that are in FMP, that are on the new team that's coming up. Um, anytime you have any kind of, and I'm going to focus on search and rescue operations, uh, well, we're going to cover those also disaster response, uh, things of that nature as well. Um, when you're talking search and rescue operations, however, you're talking four by fours. You're talking water rescue. You're talking canine. You're talking eyes in the sky, which we already have. We have Steve. Steve's listening. Everyone say hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. And Kylie. Steve and Kylie are listening. He wants to be on the show. Uh, hi, Kylie. Hi, Kylie. He wants to be on our next team show. But he is our drone operator. He has eyes in the sky. He is an FCC licensed uh, drone pilot. Wonderful. Um, has been. He also has a FEMA license, or a FEMA degree, I mean. Um, He's been on the mountain. He's been on in, heavily involved in the same case we're on, but with eyes in the sky. And 
and okay. Uh, he, he says hi. Um, oh well, I got a little announcement. If I can pass the uh, the physical requirements, I'm getting my pilot's license. Fantastic! Oh, <laughs> wonderful! Oh, Fantastic! That means you got right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Cause, cause you now you got it. no reason for not Woo-hoo. coming. We need you to get helicopter license. That's exactly after I get the uh, after I get the uh, for the regular first license. I'm going to go for rotor. You know, get a helicopter license. I'm going to try and build one of those little rotorway kits. Here's how our operations will go. Because if you get your rotor, then uh, we're all we're set. Because we'll have. <laughs> Astral team, ping on location. We'll have you jump in in the bird. We'll do a rope rescue on, on site and, and and recover whoever. Um, you just bypass the rest of it, eh? Exactly. Uh, you, you know, <laughs> and, and the, the problem you have is when you have official capacities that are already on site, they lock the site out. They do that for a reason. Um, uh, I'm not hating on them. They do that for a reason. They have to keep their airspace right. tight. So they can get their own birds in. So they can get their own. Well, they don't have drones. <laughs> so they can get their own birds in. Um, <laughs> they, nice they, they have very, very selective drones that they do use. Um, <sighs> the only reason we couldn't get involved on this case sooner than we did was because they had the site locked out. And uh, Steve and I drove down to that site as soon as we were able and got the ice in the sky. Um, and I know Steve's been down there uh, numerous days since then, going back tomorrow. Um, difference being, he's going to be paying attention to these sites that the mediums and the astral are telling him they need. He need to go. He needs to go check out. Yeah. Um, gives us a much better chance of getting this girl home. So. Yeah, and you did say she's been gone twenty five days already. Yeah, yes. well, today's 26. Yeah. Yeah. 26 now. Yeah, 26 yeah. now. Um, and, and again, I'm not I'm not delving into specifics. We're talking what our team is going to do as far as the future. This is just a prime case to use for an example of how uh, if we had a boots on ground, we could actually uh, be a lot more active. Um, we already have a new member that joined today. He was getting his paramedic certification. So Ooh. we need we need medics. Yep. Uh, we definitely need, we need, definitely need at least one to two paramedics on site. Um, and, and again, when you have a base camp, you're always going to need cooks. You're always going to need someone uh, just to maintain order. Um, you know, make, make sure no one comes into the base of operations, which is where we'll be. Um, yeah. ra- radio operators to uh, monitor the frequencies, monitor the radios, monitor the scanners. Um, do coordination. Uh, water rescue, I'm not so worried about right now because, well, they have official capacities to handle water rescue. Um, four by four. So, you know, I was in ESAR back in the 80s before I joined the Army. Back then, if there was a call out, every team rolled. There was no segregation. There was no, oh, we're just going to pull this team, we're going to pull that team. Every single team rolled, uh, which means you got four by fours. What's the capacity of a four by four? Four by four has got two missions. One, they roll roads. They're beating every road that's around that area that you're searching. Two, depending on the, uh, the ability of their vehicle, how big it is, they uh, load up basically with a squad of searchers. They'll drop them off at the highest point, and the searchers will, they'll, they'll, searchers will dismount, and they'll, you know, do a grid down the mountain. That's how 4 by 4s is rolled. We already have a 4 by 4 leader. We see more uh, more folks with 4 by 4s that want to jump in. And before I go further, I'm not taking away from local capacities. Local capacities also have their own search and rescues. We're just a search and rescue team with, uh, well, a more unique perspective. And that would be the medium and the astral, which won't get listened to. So we're going to do our own thing. 
With that, though, without stepping on toes, we still need to get state certified, which means everyone on the team needs to go on the FEMA Academy website, and uh, I'll post all these links later on. We're actually starting training in October. But you have to take the ICS, I believe it's 100, 200, 700, and maybe Steve will probably correct me, it might be 800. They're real easy, they're free. You just go online, you take a webinar, basically, and write a certificate. That's all there is to it. Uh, okay. What we're missing is ta- tactical, technical uh, rope rescue, and I believe we have a line on one in the UFOI team. So with that, we need ground. Like I said earlier in the show, I'm going on 50. Uh, I can go on basic hikes. I can go in the basic woods. But when it comes to climbing up peaks and things like that, I'm just not in the right uh, yeah. <laughs> fitness anymore. I yeah. like to stay in camp and help out. And, and that's fine. We're going to have uh, you know plenty of, plenty of uh, positions that people are going to be able to fill doing this. Apparently, I've already been listed as Camp Cook, so because I can get that slop out quick. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. Uh, camp cook, and we have the Camp Barbecue. The Camp Cook will probably be Chris, Chris and Brent. You will be the Camp Barbecuer. She'll do breakfast. You'll do lunch. Dude, I can outdo any of them on breakfast. Trust me, I can make I make the best breakfast burritos. I can do security. <laughs> yeah, I came to the conclusion my going out going out astrally for search and rescue is great. Going out physically, number one, bad leg, not a good start. Number two, you better have nine one one ready because you can bet your bottom dollar I'll be lost. <laughs> <laughs> that that's where the training's going to come in because uh, the last thing you want is a SAR team to be getting lost. <laughs> yeah, so we'll really be doing that would not be good. That would be me. You know, I have no sense of direction. Well, I've yet to find yeah. one with, a, you know, I, I've got a sense of direction the second to none. I've yet to find yeah. somebody with one worse. <laughs> me. Oh, you might. You Bobby. might be. <laughs> now, nah, Bobby can compete with anyone on getting lost, honestly. <laughs> so I, I want to pull Dredda in now. Uh, dredda has been listening for the last hour or no, 11 minutes. <laughs> Patiently listening. Um, where do you see aftercare fitting in with this plan? Um, well, I see it fitting in with um, um, so not I, only. Real, real quick, ahead. back up. Uh, explain, because uh, I always like taking our show as if we have listeners that have no clue. So what aftercare does on a paranormal level is... Okay. What do you do on the paranormal level? Okay, on the paranormal level, um, aftercare is um, uh, we're trained individuals that include um, psychiatrists, uh, crisis counselors, and metaphysical specialists, and together we're there to help the client move on by providing counseling and guidance after their trauma, as well as providing them with the necessary instructions to prevent further paranormal occurrences. So we go in and we can, we talk with the client. Um, uh, we can teach them to um, learn a grounding meditation, uh, saging their home, um, uh, healing things and, and having them be comfortable with it. You know, they need, they need to become, they need to learn it and be comfortable with it and know that it's not just a one-time deal. This is something you're going to do for a while. And, and we, and we want to keep in touch with them. We want you know, is, is anything coming up? So if something comes up, we might need to get another per- person on the team to come in and help with whatever might've come to, uh, come back up. But, um, we're there for support. Exactly. So, and, I can and we oh, we not we not only support the person that is in the trauma part of it. We also support our team members that are going through the whole thing too. And I could see you doing that same perspective actually on boots on ground in yes. a any kind of disaster mission. Yes. 
With the exception that they don't need to learn how to ground, they don't know they don't need to learn uh, yeah. how to field, things yeah. of that nature. Yeah, it, it, but, it can be adjusted as to what's needed. Exactly, and that's kind of what I want to want want perceived here is that you know this kind of a team doesn't have to be paranormal. We can do the exact same capacities on the non paranormal issue. Yeah, we just yeah. have paranormal skills on top of it all. Which is why I said in the beginning of the show, this is going to be a team show that you've never heard before. Um, and, you know, when it comes to the crisis counseling side, what the unfortunate part is, Francie, our therapist, mm-hmm. is in Idaho. Mm-hmm. So what I like to see locally, if we have any other, or anyone that actually gets the certification to be a crisis counselor, is what we need to see happen. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, what I found with a lot of <laughs> a lot of the people that have the, and I will call it so-called certification. Yeah, is I've listened to a lot of them, and I'm like, where did you possibly get your training from? <laughs> and I know you guys do your own screening. You know, even with the certification. Right. You know, but I mean, I, I listen to a lot of the of the people that are getting the certification. I spent 20 years with a shrink that told me flat out that he would not put me in touch with another one because, like, I spent 20 years with him. And he said, I turn you oh. over to even my most open-minded colleague, and they will have you locked up and drugged out so fast your hand will spin. Oh, goodness. Hmm. You know, well, but, he didn't do that to you. Well, that Did was just, yeah. <laughs> remind me to tell you about that one when I get out there in about a month. Yeah, so, I like to hear it. Wow, that was so, a nightmare. A, a, basic, a, a basic base camp operation we're going to go into real quick, and we're going to run into uh, a, a real quick scenario um, with a, a missing person in general. Nothing specific, and not even compared to what we're dealing with now. But basically, we're not going to get called in by local officials. We just won't no. so we have to get recognized. But what I do see happening is a family yes. has a missing family member contacting us. Once we start advertising that we do missing persons as well. Yeah, and right. Once we find last location. So generally, generally speaking, we have 24 hours before any kind of official SAR is going to show up. That's just, usually they don't respond until the individual, case by case, well, until they've been missing for about 24 hours. Mm. And once we get up, we get base camp set up, we figure out last location, and that's when we pull out the maps. And we kind of do a grid based on, uh, is this person experienced? Is this individual, uh, is it a possibility they got hurt? Is it a possibility they're down somewhere? Um, are they even still here? That's so when we get four by fours up to find closest location in. And they're going to take a team up, drop them, and they're going to start gridding down. That's when Steve jumps in. He's going to pull up the drone. By this time, we've got two drones because he's getting another one. And someone's going to be trained in his drone he's got now. We have two eyes in the sky. With his drone, we're running five miles out, five miles back. You're, you're hitting with two drones about a 10-mile span. Mm. And that's with FLIR. So when, you, when you're talking acreage covered, a lot more than a ground crew can hit in 24 hours based on terrain. Yeah. Uh, then, then we, you know, we we have Mark jump on his bird, and we go do a rappel down on site. At the same time, we've got astral team, we've got mediums locking on location, and we go check those locations out. And we'll have a much faster response time than uh, any mundane team ever could. Well, if we don't have a capability repelling out of a small, you know, home-built helicopter, 
if we find something, we can drop a flare of some kind or supply GPS coordinates. I mean, there's there's alternatives to actually getting your feet on the ground with if you can do visual. So we'll be able to cover that. Exactly, exactly. But trust me, if I have to repel, I'll repel. I've repelled before. I'm just not state certified. Ah. And, oh, Tony's gone. I was going to say, I know Tony's repelled, too. 11 Bravo's always repel. Uh, <laughs> I've done it as, you know, sport. I haven't done it militarily, but I've done it by, for sport. You know, cliff right. cliff repelling and climbing, that kind of thing. Back when I was younger, spryer, and didn't sound like a bowl of Rice Krispies when I walked. <laughs> That's yeah. just bad. So you know that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the, the sad part is you, you're going to have, because we're on terrestrial radio, we're going to have people listening to tonight, tonight's show going, they don't know what they're talking about. Well, actually, we know very well what we're talking about because, uh, again, we found people in the past. Um, not boots on ground, but a good majority of us have actually been boots on ground. We've actually been in the woods, in the mountains. We know survival. Um, we're not new to it, uh, and like I said in, in the beginning of the show or later, uh, earlier in the show. Hello. There you are. I'm I'm back. <laughs> All right. Uh, but like I said, you know, earlier in the show, I, I know what my capacity is, uh, and I won't go beyond my capacity. Uh, otherwise, I'll be the one down hurting, which is why we need younger, more fit. Um, trackers we need uh mountaineers we need people that uh you know know the mountains uh that can go up and be ground crew so what's your thoughts Corey? well my thoughts on the whole thing is is that uh you know this is going to take some time to get this stuff together for one uh for two we are definitely going to have to do some serious vetting of people because we, you know, if we're really going to do this, uh, we can't have anybody that's going to be flaky. It's going to be have to be people that, you know, if we call upon them to find a missing person, whatever it may be, well, they got to go. You know, we've got to yeah. got to be able to have people that are going to do it. Not well, I don't feel like I can do it right now. No, it's. It's, it's this is you know if it's going to be emergency response in that manner it's going to be a commitment to do it uh, yep. and then and thirdly is is that you know it's pretty obvious you know that we're not going to get any recognition and stuff until we actually prove it two or three times um, that we can go and find somebody on a mountain somewhere or wherever it may be uh, and get them back to some type of civilization safety. You know, medical help, whatever they need. Uh, it's it's going to take a little time, uh, for sure, to get this up and running. And uh, you know, I'll be frank and honest: is that you know, it's going to be one of those things that if we don't get any traction with it, we're probably just going to have to drop it. But I I hope that you know we can pull something together because I think that uh, you know. The members of our team, especially once we, you know, we're able to vet some people and get stuff through, are going to be ones that are, unlike some of the others, more open-minded uh, to look in different places and to think more critically at times because, you know, so many of the uh, municipality-type teams uh, for doing this type of stuff, they, they go so dead-center book Mm-hmm. You know, this is exactly how you have to do all of this that they never think outside the box um, I think there would be more people rescued and saved if, if they actually yes. did that you know and unfortunately that doesn't yep. happen and I think that's where we would have a leg up for sure so you know um, it's like I said it's going to take some time we're really going to have to be careful and, and be very critical on who we get on the team uh, to do this um, and it's going to have to be, you know, a very, uh, very high and tight, very high and tight. And that's where the military side is going to come in. Um, 
you know, like I said, we're starting uh, training in October. And, of course, it's going to be Paranormal 101. It's going to be ufology and alien abduction. It's going to be uh, the legal side of paranormal, just like we always do. Okay. Our training cycle always starts in October. But what's going to go along with that will be land navigation, map and compass, living off the land, basically, survival skills, um, first aid, and a that plethora, do. You know, a plethora of other skills. We I'm might licensed actually, in uh, the first aid part. <laughs> well, we, we might yeah, actually pull in. Uh, well, we might pull in astral. Me too. They get the base astral. camp. <laughs> <laughs> we might actually pull astral in to give a class on how you astrally identify a missing person. Ah. I'd uh, like to know that. We need to get um, people uh, CPR certified as well. I'm and CPR not, certified too. That, that's really not hard. That's actually no. not hard to do at all because you can actually go to, uh, uh, I believe it's Evergreen Safety in Burlington that actually does, if you have a class size big enough of 20 people, you can actually get it done. We can actually get a Red Cross to come yeah. in and do it. Uh, uh, sometimes the fire departments will do them too. You know, right. I, I actually know somebody who does the training for a lot of the EMT and fire department uh, stuff. It's the same type of thing. If you can get a class together large enough, they'll come out to yeah. whatever center. And they, they do... Uh, this person here does not only just CPR, but all of the first aid as well. Um, yeah. So, That's mm-hmm. working for Skagit yeah, County. Yeah, I, I have to have it all. Yeah. Ideally, right. we'll get the entire... CPR, you need first aid. Yeah. Ideally, we'll get the entire team CPR certified. Yeah, CPR first aid certified. Um, so some, of us, some of us actually also have... Uh, Crisis in Suicide Prevention Certification. Um, mm-hmm. We took that actually last month or two months ago uh, yep. locally. Um, that was a good so, class. You know, the more certifications we get, the more state recognized we will be. And again, like, uh, you know, and, and Steve confirmed it, uh, we need to all go. I've already got everything done, but I need to get the team on the uh, FEMA, uh, as it's FEMA University, I believe it is. Uh, again, I'll, I'll give you all the website and get the ICS 100, 200, 700, 800 done. And 100, what was it? 100, 100 700? It's 100, 200, 700, and 800. And those are your okay. basic incident command system class. Okay. All your fire departments require it. Your search and rescue requires it. Um, and we're going to require it because they're, okay. they're official, they're free. Uh, it takes maybe one or two hours per course out of your time, unless okay. you know the information already, and then you can just whip right through it. Um, it it's all part of my Homeland Security degree. Uh, I actually had to take it years ago in search and rescue, so it, it's very familiar. And okay. the military actually created the ICS. So ah. I actually... I actually use the ICS in the Army. So, okay. very familiar. It's basically your command structure, um, how things operate, why they operate the way they do, and how everything flows. So, we will get all this training, and we will be boots on ground. I think it's needed. Excuse me. I do, too. From what uh, I've been, you know, reading and stuff for the case. To be honest with you, you know, I've kicked this around for the last year or two. Have you? Yeah. And uh, yeah. It, it really took the last 25 days to see the necessity of it. Yeah. Yeah. To be completely honest with you. Um, yeah, what's your thoughts, Markham? You've been quiet over there. Oh, I was just thinking of some of the things that we could do and some of the training that's out there. I mean, you tipped me off on that arm shooter. That was a free course through Homeland Security. There's got to be a lot of resources out there that we can find 
where we can get a team that's quite well educated and it's not going to cost anything out of out of pocket. Right. That's that the other thing. Us? I will say we do have a GoFundMe up. Uh, it's, we've actually had the same GoFundMe up for the last year. Um, and that's for any kind of FMP operational costs. Uh, we are going to be needing new gear for this new team. And so anyone that wants to contribute to it can do so. Not asking anything. But if, if uh, our team's going to be successful with the new gear we need, by all means. Yeah. And you're putting that list together, right? Uh, yeah, I've actually, I'm uh, actually up to about 49000 off Granger, but I know I can get it a lot cheaper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we, we all for, need an idea of... Uh, well, that, that's actually for a lot of medical gear. That's a lot. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. we need litters. We need uh, uh, rescue baskets. That the, the, It's actually the litter that comes out of a uh, helicopter. Yes. Their yep. mesh. Um, there's a lot of uh, survival gear that we need to get, uh, and, and I would like to have an ICS command tent uh, with field yeah. desks with maps. Uh, you, you know, and comms are very important. Communications. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, there's stuff rescue uh, rescue ropes, things of that nature. There, there's stuff. A lot of stuff I do have of my own. Um, and if I actually, if, uh, if I put a list together, everyone on the team's actually already got a pack list. Uh, if you, if you just got your basic pack list already made. Oh yeah. We would be one step ahead. Yeah. Uh, it's base camp, the, you know, the camp kitchen, things of that nature, uh, that we need to come pull together. Okay. And again, you know, like Corey, Corey found a, uh, a telescope at a garage sale today that we could have used the Skywatch. <laughs> um, you know, we, we, yeah, all go to that was, that was nice we all go to garage sales and get camping gear and things of that nature. Uh, that cuts a lot of our yeah. costs down. <clears throat> so what's yeah, your other I, thoughts, Mark? <clears throat> I was say, yeah, that... Uh, Scope was a, it's a nice Bushnell one. I got it for twenty bucks today, so we got it for yeah, twenty wow. bucks. Wow! Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That, nice. is, that is called theft. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. no. Nice tripod theft. setup, the whole work. So, and then uh, nice. uh, Donna well, scoped yeah, out. Nice. Donna scoped out another bag that was sitting there, and it had, I think, uh, two two sleeping bags two, and yeah. a tent in it. Yeah. For two dollars, <coughs> we have some really nice spotting scopes that my husband uses for long, uh, for long shots. And the nice thing about a lot of the newer spotting scopes is they come with night vision. Yeah. So I mean, you know, we wouldn't have to have PVS sevens, the you know, top of the line night yeah. vision, night vision. Uh, the, yeah. the the better the quality, obviously, the the better the range. Um, but you start off small, you get the job done, you advance. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. I mean, you can fake night vision by getting some of the older, uh, oh gosh, what was Sony, I want to say it's Sony Handycam. They use the, the small compact VHS or eight millimeter, high eight millimeter, uh, Oh cartridges. yeah. The- yeah, they're small. And they have night yep. shot on them. And they are very effective. I've taken mine out. I mean, they're effective as far as the as your illuminator will go. Yeah. But right. they're, uh, they're, you know, you can trip around in the woods and see things with them. I experimented in my backyard because it's mostly woods and went out one night and made it through quite well just using, you know, using that as a, night vision though i yeah. would like you know i'll be honest i would love to be able to get a pick some gen 3 actual you know light magnifying like military grade night mm-hmm. vision the real deal not the stuff that uh, has to have a infrared illuminator on well i actually have pbs sevens on my granger uh wish list actually and i believe they're like four thousand dollars 
two. Holy <laughs> cow. But these are PBS sevens. These are the the uh, high end uh, military grade. Hey, what about some of those? Go, what about some of those military military. auctions that you talk about? I know that you they sell oh, a lot of type of crap at those things, and you can get it I cheap. I was thinking about that too. Yeah, and one of these days I'm going to have to get up there with some money and get us a couple five tons. Hmm. What about the know, night vision? They probably sell night vision stuff there too, don't they? Yeah, well, one of the problems you have with those auctions is they will put out, you know, here's a lot. You bid right. on that lot. Well, they don't necessarily say this stuff is working. <laughs> it's sort of like it has the Arkansas guarantee. If it breaks, you get both halves. Uh, not to mention, <laughs> I know P- PBS sevens are actually so classified on bases. Uh, the, the top end stuff is that they will lock a base down if anything's missing. So the chance of us finding one yeah. <laughs> for 50 bucks at the auction is probably slim to know. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, as yeah. these things improve, I mean, the I don't think there's anything wrong with the Gen 1s and Gen 2s. I mean, no. yeah. the price on them is already going. I remember when I first started looking at them, Gen 1 and Gen 2 were, you know, three and 4,000. Now they're getting into the more, you know, the realm of almost affordable, you know, about $1,200. But then you have to worry about you've got an obsolete set of night vision goggles, and if the tube goes out, now what do you do? So if you can get the if you get the gear and some spare parts, that's what's not you know that was well, what you need really to drive with. Have you ever driven with night vision? It's no, <laughs> I can imagine first time somebody's headlights hit you, it's a uh, bummer. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I, had, I, had a, well, I was a master driver, so I had to actually teach drivers training to uh, privates with you know Humvee and five ton. And part of our training, we actually had to take them out night vision driving. And there is no depth um, perception with night vision. So uh, you can't see a ditch. <laughs> now, there's a there's a website I'm going to send you the the address to that I'll pass on deals in a lot right. of uh, – they deal with a lot of the uh, military surplus. And I was just – you know, I'm looking through it for some of the gear we might need. And they've got like the old style canvas and wood stretchers for about twenty bucks, okay, or, or just under thirty dollars. So the, there's sources where you can get this stuff fairly reasonable. Well, I'm just and, not going to say that. I'm not going to say their name on the air because they're not paying me to endorse them, and I ain't giving it away for free. <laughs> well, you know, you know, not to mention the old wood uh, litters are actually what I'm used to working yeah. with. So. Uh, <laughs> I get stuff I'm com- I'm comfortable with that I could train you guys with. And then by all means, we'll jump on it and get it. And twenty bucks, yeah. Um, at one time, I had my own stash, but over the years, it's gone. So, um, you know, the old uh, IV poles, the, uh, the the saw horses that you put the litters on, uh, you know, all all that kind of stuff would be great. And, and again. The site you're talking about would have all the stuff I'm talking about. So uh, we'll definitely take a look at that one. So, Keith, what's your thoughts? How can we advance this? Well, the first thing you've got to do, obviously talking to the population is is necessary, but what you got to do is is get to... You t- you you connect with the with the layman, if you will, that are open, and utilize their connections to get into the into the um, actual the if you will licensed search teams and the licensed investigation teams, where you can at least get the what they'll consider proof to get your name out there. You know, it's not necessarily going to be a case of going in through the front door. We're going to have to go through the back door. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And assist, 
Assisting with cases, showing their capacity is one way of doing that. Absolutely. The other thing you might want to consider doing is setting up some sort of a some sort of a meeting. And quite frankly, you could do it on S4 as far as I can tell. But bring in a couple of non paranormal search teams, you know, search search and rescue personnel and talk about their techniques as compared to yours. To to show people yeah. that you're basically using the same concept, just different tools. We're using an astral map versus a uh, map on a wall. Even though we use both of them, we have an additional right. eye on that map that they don't have. Yes. But yes. when you're dealing with search and rescue, when you're dealing with, the, with your standard search and rescue peoples, they work on a logic base. And mm-hmm. if you can show them a logical connection between the astral bay, the astral maps, and the physical ones, and get them to point mm-hmm. out that there is no difference in the maps you're using, you know, in essence, they are the same tools that are being used. You will gain sure. better recognition. Yeah. How about this? Here's here's a suggestion. And it's so simple, yet it's, you know, would be such a, could be such a huge thing. And then in an the, aspect is, if you're going to have a kind of a separate team, but it's, I mean, it's still part of, but it's a separate team. It's a whole separate entity. Instead of having it be Forest Moon Paranormals uh, Search and Rescue, how about Forest Moon Search and Rescue uh, Emergency Management? Yes. That sounds good. Oddly enough, that actually works. You change the name, and sadly, nine times out of ten, people will see it differently. Right, so the smell. Or we just take the uh, denominator out of it and call it Forest Moon Emergency Response Team. You take the paranormal aspect yeah. out of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you could do yeah, that, Yeah, once you too. take the paranormal out, yeah. But that, think... that, that was my main thing, is just getting the paranormal part off of it, you know. And, yeah. you know, if you right. give it that little technical term of search and rescue emergency management, that is such a huge thing, and everybody goes, oh, you know, when they look at it. So it's, you know, so, something to think about, you know. I mean, you know, just to... Well, you know, for I, for that I, team specific, I can see one drawback to it: to changing mm-hmm. the name and taking the paranormal out of it. If you list yourself as paranormal as as simply Forest Moon Emergency Management Team, you, you fall into the into that quagmire that so many other companies fall uh, in, and you yeah. completely lose the people you're trying to find, right. i.e the people that are looking for the paranormal investigators. Yeah, good point. Well, that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying is we don't, we, we're adding a team, we add a name. We don't take away the paranormal from our paranormal team. You know, we're still Forest Moon Paranormal. We still have our Forest Moon Paranormal team, but if we're going to have a search and rescue emergency management team, we have now not just Forest Moon Paranormal, which is completely separate from but not com- not totally, but people will see it as completely separate from. You know, you have Forest Moon uh, Search and Rescue Emergency Management Team. Little separate entity. Little different name. Everybody looks at it completely yeah, different. Awesome. And we take the alien and the Bigfoot and the spirit off the sign. Right, because it's not part oh. of that team. <laughs> Oh. Just so that's mediums and astral people floating around then. <laughs> well, maybe you just you name it Forest Moon Search and Rescue Emergency Man- Management, a division of Forest Moon Paranormal. That way you get both groups find, uh, you know, are represented. People that are wanting to search and rescue see that first. And you know, people tend to quit reading when they see what they, what they, what they, you know, what they want to see. 
and that will, and the people who are looking for paranormal will read past that and see the the part that says a division of. Right. So that you know that way we can serve both both the client bases. Yep. Consider seeing an alien this year mountain. <laughs> yeah, which is really kind of comical. I mean, the, the number of people that that we talk to that tell me that all aliens are violent, evil individuals trying to trying to conquer the planet. I'm looking at them going like, well, if they were really trying to conquer the planet, why is everybody questioning why the, whether or not they're here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that whole thing there, yeah. that, I mean, that's a proceeding from a false assumption. If they wanted the planet, if you can harness, mm-hmm. and I've said this before, if you can harness the power and the technology it takes to go faster than light to get here, it's definitely a Bambi versus Godzilla. Mm-hmm. It, yep. Yeah, the war would be over before, you know, the takeover would it'd be over before it began. Yeah. There'd be yeah. no no the Independence Day crap where you know, our best weapons, it would be more like War of the Worlds, where our best weapons had no effect on the invaders. Well, so, yeah, but not necessarily, because, like, how fast can we astral somewhere? Can you tell, have you ever figured out, this? I bet you have, the speed of, that, like you said, you asked me earlier, how fast can I be across the other side of the world? I'm, like, on the blink of an eye, almost. Well, that's, that's the we, thing about... But we can't but we control travel. the world. That's, well, that's not travel within. That's not, you know, not that's like not travel within normal ship. space time. But that's mm-hmm. that's the funny thing about it. It is that talent that has the off-worlders concerned. The number of, of humans that can actually astral travel, and there'd be more if they'd actually relax, but... Mm-hmm. Astral travel puts you into a different field that bypasses the mechanical electromagnetic fields. Okay, mm-hmm. it bypasses the entire drive system because of the ability to interrupt the connectivity between uh, between neutrons, protons, the nulls, and the electrons. It tears them completely apart if you know what you're doing. Well, and you know, we actually have a couple recent cases where the client is actually astraling without knowing they're astraling. So, you know, that goes right into what you're talking about with if all the people that could astral were actually astraling, you know, the off-worlders would be in trouble. Well, that and that. I've had one recently to say, oh, him and his friends astral too, but I'm not sure if that's 100% right, but, you know, the you can run across more and more people that say they do or or do naturally. So can you be taught how to do that or is it something? Yeah. Sure. I was. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, I don't, I I don't 2011. Everybody is born with the ability. The problem is you're taught to stop using it. Usually mm-hmm. by the time you're three or four years old, five at about the latest. People are taught mm-hmm. to stop using it. Just like everything mm-hmm. else, you can be taught to reactivate it. Well, how much of that is also calcification of the pineal gland as we get older? It's well, almost like the, the, the environment is designed to keep us from being able to continue using that's those the kinds funny of part. Hmm. The pineal gland can actually be reactivated you can actually decalcify the pineal gland mm-hmm. and thereby open the door. Yeah. Okay. And it's, it's done, that decalcification is done by, ma- by magnetic resonance. Hmm. So my age could have an effect on not being able to do that? Uh, by no. It could have an effect on slowing it mm-hmm. down, but okay. you can learn and you can bypass the problem because mm-hmm. think, you got to remember that the biggest problem with astral travel is not the astral travel. It literally is the belief that you have to rely on the physical body to be able to do it. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Most people... Well, I, are, go ahead. 
Go ahead. I didn't. I, I didn't mean to cut you off, Keith. Most people that are that are taught to astral travel are taught you have to have an umbilical cord in order to find it. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I don't use my umbilical. first lesson. <laughs> See, I don't well, use I, an umbilical cord, but I wouldn't recommend doing it without it. Well, that's one of the things I noticed when I read Robert Monroe's books that, in a lot of cases. He never mentions, uh, you know, a lot of his experiments, he did not mention that the silver cord or, you know, what we're calling the umbilical cord. Yeah. Some he did and some he, to him, it was more of a, oh, that's there. But it doesn't seem to have a bearing on the length or the, the dimensionality or where you can travel, how far. Uh -huh. It, it's just uh -huh. there. It's like a, you know, like an appendix or so. You know, it's a vestigial yeah. organ yeah. as far as the astral form is con concerned. It's hmm. more a way of uh, for most people to figure out where they left their body. Because that's kind of how I was taught in 2010. But you know what? It was. I mean, that wasn't the best. I was just like doing a year course of meditation, and towards the end of it, that was where you grounded into learning to astral travel on it and and I did it visualizing with the cord and everything and I and it was a third trip I felt like I wasn't gonna get back in my body and it was a really weird sensation and I never did it again until like twenty sixteen. <laughs> Can I say See, the but, um, I traveled I wanted to go home so I didn't pull I didn't take the cord with me because I didn't care where my body ended up. Right. Yeah, he's tired of automatically there. I mean, I've been doing it since I was a child, and I never, ever, never even yeah. pay attention to it. It's just, it's just there. Like I said, yeah. I don't pay attention to anything like that anymore. Really, I don't have anything. I, I mean, I know. I just feel like I'm, you know, I'm gone out of there. And I come back in. It's just, well, I don't know. I don't know where to go. Once you get to that point, you just do it without thinking about it. Like Tony can. Yeah, do you're it. in and out, just as normal as walking in and out yeah. of a door. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah. What, when, once you gain that skill, we take that skill and we teach you combat. That's mm -hmm. really, really the only yeah. difference between the basic class and the advanced class we teach is okay. the combat side of it and how you handle a case. Um. So, you know, and, and like he said, yeah, when, once you understand how to bypass, uh, it, it's a matter of developing the skill and then doing it more yeah. often. You, you, you do, you, you, you learn more with practice. Yes. And the more cases you do, well, mm -hmm. here you are. <laughs> hmm. Oh, trust me, it wasn't this past two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was fast. Nothing like as fast as now. It's different, you know, and it's still get yeah. you know, you get more and more trained and you get more so you keep yeah. taught more and more as you go. Right. And we're coming down to the last eight minutes of the show. So it's been a great show. I think we've got everything we wanted accomplished. And I just wanna say, you know, we have an awesome team. It just gets really frustrating when this awesome team doesn't get utilized properly. Well, I do feel you'll be finding that starting to change pretty quick because of some of the shifts that are happening. Mm -hmm. so. And if things keep going the way they are, it's not going to matter what you're training. They're going to want search and rescue to come in and and give a hand. Right. Right. <clears throat> and it's so pretty again, it's pretty obvious in some of the shifts that have been going on. I mean there has been more very mm, odd cases. And I say odd cases in a, in the field that we're working in, okay? You know, the most people yeah, think it's really odd to start with. So I mean we've had a yeah. lot more odd cases for us uh in recent times yeah. than i think we've ever seen before so yeah it's it's not uh it's not real surprise that there is uh definite shifts coming that uh mm. keith is talking about there because it, it's it's getting 
very different. I can tell you that much in a lot of the cases that we see coming through. Yep. And, you know, the thing is, you're going to find more and more people where the problem is, as you as you alluded to earlier, the problem is that people are triggering their own abilities, not realizing they've triggered them and getting caught yeah. in a reality that looks completely screwball compared to <laughs> what everybody else is talking about. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, yeah, again, that's happening. We are doing a heavy recruiting drive for new members. Okay. Uh, we have Paracon coming up in. Oh, what's our count? Twenty-eight days. Yeah, about that. <laughs> and for everyone listening, make sure you're here, September twenty-second, ten a.m. to six p.m. And, and then if you're if you, if you're still, you know, if you're just not tired, we got the VIP roundtable. Where you're gonna to get to meet Keith, you're gonna get to meet Michael Hall, uh, Dave Scott. You're gonna to get to meet. You know, we have a plethora of speakers coming, and it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> and then we're gonna go right into breathing time <laughs> from all this planning we do, and <laughs> go right into go right into training for the new members. Um, and we actually have new members lining up already, uh, so it, it, it's nice. actually it's actually exciting. Um, for anyone listening to, if you haven't found Forest Moon Paranormal yet, go on Facebook, look for Forest Moon Paranormal, join the group, introduce yourself. Uh, we're we're always excited. We're excited about any new members, but we're always excited about locals because yeah. It's a stronger team with numbers, for sure. Uh, so, any closing comments? Well, the the one thing is that I really suggest people do, aside from get to the Paracon, is quite frankly keep an open mind with whoever you're talking to, because some of the strangest right. things. As, it's, as the saying goes, truth is actually stranger than fiction. I agree. Markham? Well, I just go back to the old saying, you know, there's more on heaven, there's more to, in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy. You know, anything you can imagine statistically is the size of the universe, everything, it, just about anything you can imagine is out there. It's just whether it's here, whether you can, whether you can in, encounter it on Earth or at any given time. But I mean, there's nothing so far fetched that it doesn't exist somewhere in this universe. And that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, Excellent. as 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 we've said before, how deep does that rabbit hole go? Yeah, yeah, it's a toroid. It just goes in on itself. <laughs> Yeah, I, I want to say it was great having Dredd on the show tonight, too. Uh, Dredd is another one that doesn't get on the show too often. She's usually listening. Um, you got any closing comments, Dredd? Um, no, I, I've i learned a lot tonight being on here. I've, I've always been, uh, when I first heard of Astro, I didn't even begin to understand what it was. And and uh, my curiosity has been piqued quite a bit. <laughs> but... Um, uh oh. <laughs> this is an amazing team. It really is. So you're amazing too, Jaretta. <laughs> yeah. Yep, you are. Uh how how about you, Don uh Donna and Bonnie? Um just um you know, jump into SMP if you have questions. Ask them. There's there's no such thing as a stupid question, and um, you know we're here to to educate. Um, and you know if you're at a point that you're beyond the education point of it and you need help, yeah. we're here for that too. That's good to know. I don't think it's possible to get beyond the education point. No, never. You, you know. Yeah. It, 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 
This actually came up uh, again when I was on Christina's show. Is that you know this team is learning every case we do. There's no such thing yeah. as an expert in this field. We're always learning, mm-hmm. and we've been doing this for 16 years as a team. So, you know, come on now. I've yeah. been in this field for 28. And I'm just barely scratching the surface. So for anyone to sit there and say, you don't know what a spirit is because I've done this. Well, yeah. Any <laughs> team that's been in this field for under 10 years is a newbie. That's just the bottom line. <laughs> Things are changing, that's for sure. There's always something new as we figure out. Oh, yeah. Or there's always something yeah. new that makes us scratch our head. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, you just see some of the things that are going to come across through the breaches. That ought to be entertaining. Okay, for folks. Me, it's, for you. it's that time. Well, we're going to see. It's endless, I know that. And I wouldn't change what I do either. You know, what I see and the people we help. We get, we get to help a lot of people, too. And uh, that's what it's all about to me. Someone having, you know, understanding of their life and themselves and peace. Being able to yep. deal with it, you know. All right, Corey, go ahead and take us home. Now we're gonna I'm find going some people to. too. <laughs> All right, I'd like to thank our panel this evening: R. Keith Andrews, astrologer and alien specialist; Donna Cunningham of the Astral Team; Bonnie Smith of the Astral Team. I'd like to thank Tony Lacroix of the Astral Team for being on earlier. Uh, Jaretta Osborne of our uh, aftercare team for being on this evening and Eric Markham for getting the opportunity to jump in with us here. We don't get to see him too often uh, as in recent times because he's been busy with work. So uh, join us next Saturday at midnight Pacific Standard Time. We will be talking about chemtrails. You can find us on Spreaker.com, The Fringe FM, and KSVU. 90.1 for our local listeners. I would like to thank all of our listeners because without you, there is no S4. Good night, and remember, keep your eyes to the skies. At Essentia, we're here to put a flag in the ground and tell the world a better you starts with a better water. This isn't fashion. This is science. Essentia is supercharged ionized alkaline water with a 9.5 or higher pH and a clean, smooth taste. Essentia is designed for the doers, the believers, the overachievers. Drink it in and do all the things that make you extraordinary. Extraordinary.